Cut MDF to thickness and all it's done. This is a make or break moment. Because I don't really know. I mean, the same way that I don't know what the guitar sounds like until I put the strings on or plug it in, I don't know if I'm going to find buyers for the instruments once they're on display. That's how I feel, man. That's how I fucking feel. Amen to that. This one I bought, I think, in, in, in 2010. Yeah. 2010 I bought. Yeah. Oh, neck is still nice. Cool, man. Let's sit down and yeah, uh, cool. mess around with this. First, when you have a scene, you have only the musicians. But you cannot, you, you cannot have a scene with only musicians. You need the musicians and you need the people that work around them. So the, it's necessary to have people like Nick in today's scene. Building with my hands. I mean, we've got, we've got our senses. You know, and apart from the five, you know, main senses of being able to interpret the world around us, we have other ones. We have balance and security and, you know, but making things with your hands, man, you're touching on all those senses, all of them, but it's like this kind of magical thing, man. It's got a kind of alchemy to it, man, when you're manipulating the material around you and the tools that you have to be able to create something that's greater than the sum of all parts. This is my bread and butter. I don't have a job. I still live with my parents. But I won't go back to a bar and I won't work some, some job where some guy's gonna tell me, you know, your apron's folded wrong. I'm not going to do that. I had an opportunity to have a workshop. I put in some money and I'm sticking, sticking this all the way through. I had two choices. And my two choices coming out of my last job were Canada or Lebanon. And Canada, there is, you know, endless tools, machinery, wood, quality. I could have easily done it there, but there's a thousand other luthiers over there. Lebanon, I could be here and I could bend some rules. To truly be able to call myself a luthier, uh, there's, a, there's a big difference between having a luthery business, which is what I'm trying to do, and being able to call yourself a luthier, because you don't technically call yourself a luthier until other luthiers are like, wow, you know? And that's after having built, you know, f minimum 500 instruments. And I'm just starting out with my first few um, here in Beirut. I've got two electric guitars right now in the works. But guitars, you, there's so much finesse behind them. You've got to really treat it like it's, it's something delicate and you really do fight with it. I mean, it's not, a, it's not exactly a, a Play-Doh, you know, it's not a forgiving material. I don't follow any specific tradition. Uh, I don't, you know, I have my own school of thought and that's kind of what I, what I saw in, you know, everyone who does something, something great is they got their own kind of philosophy to it keeps me away from limitations, I would say. That's cool, man. I like the sound of it. 
I collect old guitars mm -hmm. and mostly cheap old guitars yeah. and rare guitars. Uh, and not a lot of people are actually ready to touch them. The way that I see my shop is probably similar that you see your bar eventually. Yeah. You know, my, my shop eventually is you go into a, like a 1950s barber shop to get your, your shit done yeah. properly. What I like is the fact that like pe people like you are getting their instruments fixed, tweaked up, customized, whatever it is, yeah. so that you can be comfortable on that stage and in the studio to be able to do what you do. At the end of the day, if we're talking about community and you know making this whole thing a communal thing and, and that we're all working together to kind of make something bigger, it's the musicians that are putting a thousand people in stadiums and stuff, it's not me. The willpower is fine. A lot of people are excited and, and enthusiastic when it comes to starting things. A lot of starting things. But what takes, it, it takes much more than, a, than the first willpower and excitement there. It takes a lot of fucking breath, man. the kind of shit I put myself in, man. Just getting rid of all the ugly bits. Gotta make it pretty again. All just because it didn't work out, the paint before, man. Fucking bullshit. I lose my confidence and I regain my confidence, whether it's in my work or it's uh, like I get inspired by seeing something actually happen correctly or to my to my standards it's a circular process and i know it's an up and down that i have to ride same such as with life you know at the, at the present moment my fear is that i can't do this like i invested time and money into this and i reached to a point where i'm having doubts about my ability my skill uh the outcome of my whole situation like i'm, I'm feeling like i'm wasting my time sometimes i got the cuts and scars all over my hands uh, from, from the process, and I just keep on going, man. It's a constant letting go, you know? You spend so much time building an instrument one by one, or two by two, and then you say goodbye, and then someone else loves them for however long. I've been in this shop almost every day except for Sundays since May 2013. And this is the first instrument to come out of it. Guitars, you know, it's given them a new life. I mean, before it's the, the wind that used to rustle their leaves and now it's the wood itself rustling the wind to make sound. Uh, it's kind of like reversing the whole process again. <laughs>